luz navideña. Luminaria, danos tu luz, hoy en la noche buena, caravelitas para Jesús en bolsas llenas de arena. Farolito, brinda tu calor en esa noche tan preciosa, porque mañana nace el Señor ante las tinieblas, una luz maravillosa. Luminaria, con tu llamita, resplandeces el camino del bien para que encuentres con tu visita a quien con prisa anda al Belén. Farolito, desparrama la oscuridad, eres tú una belleza sencilla que ilumina en esa Navidad más que esas esferas brillas. Luminaria, en el 24, eres tú la luz más poderosa. Iluminas a los chiquilicuatros tu alegría más gloriosa. Parolito, con tu regocijo, cantas a todos los fieles, a cada uno de los hijos de tierra de leches y mieles. Luminaria, con tu claridad, te quedes aquí en mi corazón, como signo de la Navidad, en voz baja, eres una gran bendición. Farolito, eres tú el villancico de la noche a la aurora y nos hacen eco del sagrado cantito en esta víspera encantadora. Luminaria, sin ti esta fiesta es la tierra sin sal, sonido sin orquesta, la calle sin moral. Farolito, nunca te extinguirás Adentro de mí está tu fulgor, dejarme nunca harás, iluminas el camino del Salvador. Una esencia bolsa de papel, nada extravagante, eres el atrevío más fiel que se ve aquí bastante. Luminaria, tú tienes la voz, la más bonita de todo léxico, eres un don de Dios aquí en todo Nuevo México. Christmas light. Luminaria, give us your light. Tonight on Christmas Eve, each candle is for Jesus. The paper bags weighted down with sand. Farolito, give us your warmth on this precious night. Tomorrow is the Lord's birth. In darkness, a marvelous light. Luminaria, with your little flame, together shining a good path so that our visitors can find us who are in a hurry to the nativity. Farolito, overspread the darkness, you are a simple beauty that shines on this Christmas brighter than elaborate ornaments. Luminaria, on the 24th, you are the most powerful light. You illuminate for the outcasts your most glorious joy. Farolito, with your rejoicing, you sing to all the faithful, to each of the children, of the land of milk and honey. Luminaria, with your brilliance, you stay here in my heart as a sign of Christmas, quiet voice, a small blessing. Farolito, you are the carol of the dark to the dawn, children singing a sacred echo to this lovely eve. Luminaria, without you this feast is the earth without salt, sound without music, streets without direction. Farolito, you will never extinguish. Your globe is within me. You will not leave me. You light the way for the Savior. A simple paper bag, nothing extravagant. It is the most faithful decoration. It is the most common. Luminaria, you have the voice, most beautiful in all words, a gift from God here in New Mexico.
Let us pause in life's pleasures and count its many tears while we all sup sorrow with the poor. There's a song that will linger forever in our ears. Oh, hard time, come again no more. Is the song the sigh of the weary? Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered all around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. While we seek mirth and beauty 
and music light and gay. There are frail forms fainting at the door. Though their voices are silent, their pleading looks will say, Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Oh, hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered. All around my cabin door Oh, hard times Come again no more Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Oh, hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered all around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. So many days you have lingered all around my cabin door. Whoa, hard times come again no more. Uh. The babbles we erect in our hearts crumble into shadow, rise again and crumble. And the way you thought was the way, vanishing now into the void of all your failures. And the blood in you, draining out into the night, widening between you and everything. And by some miracle, you are found. God happens. Comes singular and soft, like a solitary dove soaring over the black wreckage of your heart. Comes and nests in the one still standing steeple of your selfhood. And out of this, what? Can it even be named? Perhaps the whole of life then, but to witness this great work of the Creator in you. Undertaken at night, accomplished in secret, and sealed in silence. To feel his hands kneading you slowly, painfully into the heart of everything. Plunging you in and out of hopelessness seasoning you.
Hi, I'm Brian Nixon. I'll be reading a poem called In the Milky Way, originally published in the Penwood Review, volume 23, number two. In the Milky Way. The day they cut you open to remove the tumor, I sat in the hospital room dreaming of space. The universe is so big, galaxies fill the expanse with colossal beauty. Has Andromeda found its center? Or Canis Major revealed its destiny? I know not. But here in this space, the vastness of you has been slashed, revealing millions of intricate constellations, cellular fiber of blood and bone. Can I tell the difference between the two, you and the cosmos? Only in degree. I know merely this, you are capable of the universe. And it is better to flicker than fade, emitting untold light that I can't fully comprehend, my view limited by the stars. Come to me, come all to me, come with all your fears. Come one to me, come all to me, do not hide your tears. I'm present in the light of dawn, I'll be there in the night. You'll see me in the rainy haze, and all through the bright. Come to me, come to me, come to me, oh, come, come now. Upon the sky, the stars, and all eternity, nestled in the wind and trees, deep within the sea. I'm present in the light of dawn, be there in the night. You'll see me in the rainy haze, not throughout the bright. Come to me, come to me, come to me, oh, come, come now. Come to me, come to me, come to me, oh, come, come now, come, come now. Hope, mortal wound, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do whatever you want. Galatians 5.17 Who am I? Don't you recognize me? I used to be your king. You may not think it now, but I promise it's true. Oh, don't deny it. Once upon a time, I ruled you. 
You looked where I wished. You lusted where I wanted. I said whatever I desired, and you did it. Oh, sure, your conscience might scream a little while, always simpering, oh, no, please, please, please don't do that. But you usually gave in anyway. My future was guaranteed, thrusting your soul to and fro at a whim. With every corrupt choice, I lead you from degradation to eventual damnation. Until one day, this fleshy form will be consumed by me. Over eons of punishment, any sort of goodness will be relinquished until only I remain, basking in the flames of eternity. And then something happened. You let him in. He wasn't much to look at. Some poor, dirty carpenter by the look of him, scars everywhere. I was unnerved, but not too worried. He'd let in well-meaning types before. Faithless religion, my favorite companions. Hypocrisy's the other. If they hadn't perished at my hand, they usually left within a week's time. But not him. No, this one stayed. I, I don't know why. Something about loving you or something. But how is that possible? I had completely trashed the place. You were full of stains and, and stenches and messes and chains. I even took him on a personal tour, showed him every dirty little secret the two of us have hidden, and some you still don't know. You know what? He was completely unfazed. It was like he'd seen it all before and knew every bit. He looked on you with love and me with hatred. He had it out for me, and I knew only one of us was gonna make it out alive. So the war began. I know you felt it when you woke up the next morning. You still feel it right now. A counter desire to all of my appetites, and what's worse, the will and the strength to refuse me, even me. Oh, I try. And I will try every day of your life to stumble you and drag you back to the broad path I so miss. Yet no matter what I do, he is there thwarting me through this love, this forgiveness. Daily these new streams of hope and holiness run through these these deserts of despair you were under. Daily new gems of joy, peace, and strength blossoms from cesspools I've made. My jungles of snares burned and made way to peaceful forests. My tendrils of shadow are purged with a holy light. My paradise lost to a healthy garden, one I can't enter. And for the first time I felt it, the thing you and all descendants of Adam fear, mortality. One day, the wounds and sins I sap my life from will be healed with pure hands. The evil I exist in, he will kill. No longer will I be with you for all eternity. Instead, I will be slain and obliterated as the rest of you walks free into paradise. Revelations 12, three through four. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. All the old order has, of things has passed away. Thank you.
Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are beautiful. I know that full well. The scalpel slices through seven layers of the abdomen and into the uterus as if it were no more substantial than butter. Skin and muscles are pried apart, paralyzed by ineffective anesthetic drugs, feeling every cut, tug, pull, stitch, push, praying for God to take care of the baby I may never meet and give my husband the strength to be a single parent if God decides to call me home. There cannot be healing without pain, no growth without challenges. We tend to want unshakable faith without first having it shaken. God never pro promised us a problem-free life. On the contrary, he actually promises that we will encounter problems. I have said this, that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, there will be many trials and sorrows, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. We are promised hard times, but we are also promised hope. A unique hope that only comes from the Father above. We will walk through various valleys, but the beautiful thing is that we are not alone in the valley. We have Christ with his rod and staff beside us, guiding us through it and out the other side. Just as wounds slowly heal and eventually scar, so does our soul heal. Just as we are instructed to rest after major surgeries, we must also learn to rest in the spirit, to trust that he will heal us if we allow him to. Have you ever opened your eyes underwater without wearing goggles? Depending on the type of water you do this with, there are varying degrees of difficulty on seeing things clearly. For me, postpartum was like having my eyes open underneath green murky water where things looked blurry and distorted. Knowing that there are people who love me and depend on me, all the while feeling useless and alone. Not being able to breastfeed my baby in a breast is best culture and feeling inadequate as a mother as a result. Who am I that I can't even feed my own baby? Going through the motions so no one will worry, yet feeling numb. Every smile, joke, interaction feels like a Herculean effort. Trying to claw your way out, but may as well be stuck in a sand pit and sinking deeper with each effort to become free. Isaiah 66, 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. When in the pit of despair, the darkest cave, the deepest water, where does comfort come from? A bottle? A needle? A person? The cross? Just as Jesus pulled Peter out of the water and kept him from drowning, he can pull us out of our despair. He's there, hand open, offer extended. Will you take it? Thank you.